Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Yeah, we get a lot of email. Yes, we do. We, 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 we appreciate it. Yep. And we do our very best to re reply to each and every one that we get, unless we just can't make heads or tails of it. Right. Uh, and you got a suggestion from a listener. Yes. On a topic. So you remember we did a show recently that was 10 things you should get out of your life. Oh, right. By the age of 40. Right. Mm -hmm. So this listener suggested things you should never get out of your life. So mm. in other words, you're going to have a garage sale. You're going to sell a bunch of stuff. Never let your wife talk you into selling these things. For you, what would like what would one of those things be? Well, ironically enough, uh, I have something with me here. Here we go. Oh. Baseball cards. Yeah. Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Roger Maris. Don Mattingly. Um, Whitey Ford, a pitcher oh. from my youth. Thurman Munson. Oh. And this one here, I know you're saying, hey, that's Ron Swoboda. He was a Met, not a Yankee. Well, guess what? Ron Swoboda was a Yankee for several years. Really? So that would probably be my first answer. We're not selling my baseball cards. Those are going to my kids when I'm gone. You know, and I was telling you when we when I saw those cards, my brother-in-law, who passed away of cancer, he set up my son with Fleer, Donruss, and Topps, complete sets of baseball cards in order, in a binder uh, for, I, I don't even know how many years it covers, but there are some extremely valuable cards in there, rookie cards. Wow. And, uh, all-star cards. My baseball card collection, uh, f the large part of them went in the spokes of my bicycles. Yes, true. And then my mom threw the rest away. Right. Roberto, Clemente, Willie Mays, they were all going <laughs> yep. on your tire, or your wheel, rather. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what are some other things you, you never should get rid of? So one of the things is sitting right here sitting just off camera. Your motorcycle? I have my motorcycle. Now, I haven't ridden it because it's super dangerous anymore. People don't pay attention. Uh, but I will never get rid of it. Um, I will eventually, I'll ride it again. I don't even know what it is. I've never seen it uncovered. What it's kind a of 1993 CBR 900 RR. Kawasaki? Uh, Honda. Oh. Honda CBR 900 RR. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the very first ones. 93 was the first year that they came out with the 900 RR. And basically, it's a 600 frame, a 600 cc frame with an almost one liter motor on it. And the thing is a screaming demon. It'll do wheel stands in third gear easily. It's so fast. Wow. Um, but it was kind of like, kind of revolutionized big motorcycles back then. Big bike, small small frame, big engine. You know, I am willing to place a wager that says, once you become a grandfather, I bet that thing goes. <sighs> Maybe. And you know what? My son-in-law, he's always throwing out little hints that he would love to buy it. Uh -huh. It's only got 12,000 miles on it. It looks like it's been sitting in a time capsule. It's got a cover on it right now. It's absolutely, it's never been down on the ground. It's never been tipped over. It's immaculate. But Hey, I got one. Yep. I never, never should have gotten rid of my 1968 Firebird. Oh, yeah, you should. That oh, should have kept that thing for sure. Man, and here's the story behind that. It was a 68 Firebird 400 uh, Ram induction. It had a four-speed. And my mom hated when I got this car because she used to say, if that thing had wings, it would take off. It was that fast. Yep. And here's the story. I had it for about two and a half years. And as a teenager, I was 17, but I was responsible enough that, you know, and, and I did like to go fast, don't get me wrong, but the car never had a scratch on it. It never had a dent on it. It was always washed and waxed. I wa worked at a car wash, so it was always immaculate. And when I went off to Hawaii back in 1977, I had to sell the car. So I sold it to 
my mom's neighbor, this woman had a son and she wanted to sell, she wanted to get the car for him. Hmm. And not knowing then what I know now, uh, I thought, yeah, sure, I need the money. I'll take, you know, you bet, and we'll take it. Oh. That kid had that car two days, and he rolled it off the side of a road. Oh, man. And, and you know those stories about how uh, your kids chip in and they get you your original car that you had? Right. That ain't going to happen. No. That thing no. is long gone. It's probably made up one of the beer cans that you've had <laughs> over the years. On that same note, do you remember Mark Bertolucci? Of course. Uh, he had a 1969 Camaro Supersport 396. What color was it? Uh, it was. It looked like it was primer. It was originally a uh, silver color, and the paint was kind of shot. And uh, but it was silver. I can't remember. I think it had a black vinyl top. Can't remember if it had a vinyl top or not. But regardless, and a four-speed. He sold the car. He was. Uh, I think he wanted to buy a Jeep, and uh, he was either buying a Jeep or a Chevy truck. I can't remember which came first, but he sold the car within a week, totaled. Uh, same thing, happened right up on Walnut Avenue, very close to his house. And the kid wasn't ready. It's a lot of power, a lot of horsepower. I mean, cars now are unbelievably powerful. Uh, I mean, you've got six-cylinder cars that have over 300 horsepower, Right. but still. Yeah. All right. Next up on my list, okay, my golf clubs. All right. Okay. You know, I had shoulder surgery a couple years ago. Uh -huh. uh, it's my left shoulder, which is where all your your follow through right. is. I can't really swing clubs very well right now, and I'm hitting up physical therapy again a couple times a week. So hopefully, at some point, I'll get a little bit more range of motion back. But regardless. I can't sell my golf clubs. Mm -hmm. I have had cheap sets, and finally, I have a set of Callaway irons. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not selling them ever. Yeah, they'll be passed down to my grandchildren or somewhere. Well, in spite of my inabilities to walk, <laughs> I still drive by two golf courses every day on the way to work. Yep, and I and one of them is just like a. a a par, um, what is it, 54? Okay. You know, a three, a par three, maybe it's 56 par. And uh, it's not that far, to, it's not too far to walk. <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, and see, that's just the thing. Even when I get a cart, I, there's still a certain amount of walking that's involved. Yeah. And um, my left knee will go in and out. Yeah. Uh, of socket, uh, you know, almost randomly. It's unpredictable. So Well, the bad part is also, if you're not a, a great golfer that's out there every weekend, your ball does not always land right on the fairway. Well, that's for sure. So even if you park the cart here and you mm -hmm. go out, there's a lot of walking around looking for your damn ball. I know. So there is. There's some. There's still some walking involved. You know what, Ronnie? We've known each other for 45 freaking years, and never, we've never played golf. Never golfed. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should do that. The name of this golf course is called Antelope Greens. They even have an island hole there. I am almost positive I've golfed there before. Probably, yeah. I want to say on the first or second hole, it's a you have to shoot over water. Yeah, it, it, you do. I think I lost two or three balls. I'm sure. <laughs> in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, they've got two holes that are par fours, so you, you Ooh, can probably yeah. exercise the three wood, not the driver. Right. Anyway, okay, um, I would throw in, as far as things that I could never give away, that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Okay. Or you wouldn't let your wife talk you out of, okay. get rid of. Yeah. Guitars. Oh, yes. There's just not a chance. Now, I can't claim that I still have my first original guitar. That thing came apart many, many years ago. But I have three guitars that are of such significant importance to me, and each has a story. Uh, that gold Les Paul guitar that I have, right. I played that at my bachelor party the first time I got married. <laughs> I think you remember that day. Yep. yep, vaguely. And it still has blood on it from playing <laughs> so freaking hard. So my guitars, I won't go into how, what I have. but um, Kind of the same for me. I would have to put, and you know what? I have bought and sold... Quite a few guitars. I know, more, way more than me. I 
I get tired of them or I don't play them. I have one right now I'm thinking about selling. I probably wouldn't miss this particular one if I sold it. But there is there is a guitar that I had. I had a Rickenbacker 360. I only kind of remember that. Oh, man. We, you know what, our band doesn't play a lot of Tom Petty stuff. We don't play a lot of Beatles stuff. And that's kind of the, the, the tone of this guitar is very unmistakable. It's kind of almost single purpose. Yeah. I wasn't playing it enough. It was very valuable. I sold it. And I, oh, I wish I had it back. Yeah. Wish. Ah, you know, if wishes were unicorns. <laughs> you can quote me on that one. They might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we want to hear from you. Uh, we put together a list a couple of episodes back of things you do need to get rid of by the age of 40. And one of our listeners uh, suggested that we do things you should not get rid of. And I think we've shared some of ours. And yeah. it's time for you in our comment section below. You know how much we enjoy your comments. And some of you say, well, I comment all the time. That's fine, too. We don't care. Yeah. You know, what we do ask, and, and this is key, Ronnie, we really need to boost our subscribers right now. And I am not BSing. Okay? We've been doing this for two, over two years and bringing you what we believe the very best content we can come up with uh, for your entertainment purposes. And our numbers show we have lots of views and lots of time spent listening or watching. But we need to have more subscribers because that's what YouTube wants from us before we can possibly make money. And really, that's why we got into this. Not, not Yeah, it's because we're friends and we get to get together at least once a week or so and, and hang out. But really, in order for this to be a money-making proposition, we need to have subscriptions. Uh, at the time of this taping of this show, we were at 526. 527. 527. Yep. And see, I could lie about that and tell you we're at a million. But no, we're not going to do that. We're being upfront with you and telling you, if you have friends, if first, if you'd like this show. Yep. And you have friends of like mind, like us, you and us, the relationship that we have, please don't hesitate to tell them. Yeah. Check, check this show out. I think you might find it funny. And uh, we'll just keep putting them out. There are close to 450 episodes. Yeah. Boy, that went fast. Hey, <laughs> it did. Uh, so please, when you're it watching only, the it show. It seems like we filmed 440. It seems like that to me, yeah. Every bit of it. <laughs> so uh, tell some friends, get them to subscribe, click the notification bell, and that way uh, you'll get a, a signal each time a new show comes out. Yep. That'll do it for us. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. <laughs>